here's what's happening inside of my brain. Uh huh. He's starting to become less cringe because he's playing a bunch of super fucking cringe TikToks. <laughs> he's offsetting the cringe. This video was posted the other day in McKenty posted. Why is emo popular again? And then in parentheses, this is why it died. I want to watch this. I want to see how Finn McKenty, a man who has not really had a lot of strong, positive opinions about emo. And I want to see what he he feels yeah. about why it came back. What's popular about it now? He might have some good takes. He might have some takes we disagree with. We're going into this. Totally uh, new, this is fresh. We have not watched this, so you know we'll we'll find out. We'll find out if we are on the Finn train or if Finn's being pushed off the caboose. Oh my God! They're playing my Chemical Romance, Nicole. You know I'm scared of emos. I think that's the funniest fucking sound on TikTok, honestly. What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty, and in case you haven't heard, my friends, Emo is officially back. And actually, it has been for a while now. As just a few examples of what I'm talking about, My Chemical Romance's most recent tour was one of the biggest of the year. Paramore is back in action with their most recent album, This Is Why, hitting number two on Billboard over Taylor Swift, Drake, and Bad Bunny. And as you may remember, the When We Were Young festival last year was a huge success, giving all the elder emos a chance to feel like it is 2005 again, only this time they can drive themselves and they don't even have to get up early for school the next day. AFI representation. I'm okay. We love it. that. Yeah. Fine with me seeing Davey Havoc on my on my Finn McKenty video. But what's really interesting to me is that this is not just 32 year olds reliving their high school days. Gen Z is embracing 36. 2000s emo in a way that honestly, oh. I never thought I would see. And in general, they seem to just really appreciate older music. So my question is, what's going on here? Why is emo more popular now than it has been in probably 15 Yo, years? I, okay, and why are that, there some that following your like shirt? I have yeah. that shirt still. Yeah. That was like, my favorite fucking shirt when I was in high school. <laughs> also, I just don't like that all this shit is just TikToks. <laughs> just, that just, I understand it because this is youth culture, so therefore it's on TikTok. How many younger Ooh, people now who are into these though. bands that were in their prime when they were still in diapers? So the way that I see it, My Chemical Romance are really the flag bearers of this whole emo revival thing. And if you don't believe me, just look at TikTok and you will see thousands and thousands of examples, many of which are elder emos having what seems to be kind of a semi-religious experience. Which honestly makes sense to me. My Chemical Romance had amazing, classic, timeless songs. They had the definitive 2000s emo look. And very importantly, they also broke up when they were at or very close to the top of their game versus, say, Panic at the Disco, who honestly probably stuck around a lot longer than they should. Let's fucking chill, dude. Let's fucking chill, right, man. Calm down. Listen. Look, the internet hates Panic at the Disco. Oh, Y'all are wrong for that shit. Y'all are weird. Y'all are parasocially. And I think Finn is just trying to get some fucking wins on Twitter today with this. Yeah. But I also understand the take of like, oh, Panic at the Disco stuck around for too long. Um, may I offer you some fallout boy, my friend? May I offer uh, you a little bit of that fallout boy? See now, but see now. Hold on, hold <laughs> no! on, hold on. No! This same opinion about Panic at the Disco can also be said about fallout boy because of the overall reception to mania from a lot of people that are cowards. in the emo scene. Yeah, so cowards. If you're going to say this about Panic at the Disco, you got to also say it about Fall Out Boy. And I find that there is a lot of like pick and choose in here. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, don't people don't like Brendan Neary for a variety of reasons. And they had said like, oh, why didn't he just end Panic and do his own thing? I'm like, I mean, he still owns it. It's still his. He could do whatever he wanted with it. Could he have done like his own? I mean, listen, the last album... It was fine. Like I, I liked it. Not I liked my favorite, it. but I liked it. People out the woodwork finding whatever the fuck they can to be like, mm, Panic at the Disco fell off. Who cares? Let them fall off. If you're going to say it about Panic at the Disco, you got to say it about Fall Out Boy. You got to say it about all, any band that has stuck around for the same general amount of time to, to do the same shit. 
And so for any of the people who didn't get to see them back in the day, these MCR reunion tours are really a chance to feel like you're 16 again. And I think the same is true of the When We Were Young Festival. If you missed it, it happened last October, and the lineup was basically the who's who of mid-2000s Hot Topic emo. MCR, Paramore, The Used, AFI, Jimmy Eat World, and just dozens and dozens more. This lineup was absolutely stacked. And we all know that nostalgia is great marketing, and these elder emos are now in their 30s and they can afford to go to these big destination festivals, but it's not just MCR. The same thing has happened with bands like All Time Low, Deftones, and most recently Pierce the Veil, getting popular with kids who, again, were maybe at best in diapers when these songs came out. And as even more evidence, Emo Night is still going strong. Here's what's happening inside of my brain. Uh huh. He's starting to become less cringe because he's playing a bunch of super fucking cringe TikToks. <laughs> he's offsetting the cringe. We also got some pastel pink. You know, I think you pull off a pastel golf look. All in the last Bye. few years, you've seen tons of kids wearing Nirvana, Sublime, and Guns N' Roses merch. So my question is, why is this happening? Why are so many younger people getting into emo and just really older rock music in general? And just to be clear, none of this is a bad thing at all. I think it's awesome that young people are into these bands, and by no means is this me being the gatekeeper and telling them to stop being into it. I just A shocking turn from McKenty over here. I think that, like, it comes off... Like he he is a boomer, right? I don't think that he actually like he is very much a like marketing person. He he's on his Gary V arc. I'll put it that way. Yikes. Like he's very much on his Gary V arc. Cringe. But like he he does all the right shit of like getting views on the videos, getting like people involved in his shit. I don't necessarily agree with him on a, a lot of shit, but like if he says he's cool with this being a thing, I think he's getting it at least from the end of like, yeah, people like it. People are into it. So who am I? Are, yeah, the marketing's working. People are into it. People are spending a lot of money who on it. I? I built then. I find this really interesting because typically younger people would reject anything that came from their parents' generation. Who am I? I Dad, see. Dad. So why are so many younger people who are too young to have experienced these bands in their prime getting into them now? And why aren't they latching on to newer rock bands in the same way? The first argument that I'm sure a lot of people will say is just that new music sucks and that young people are latching onto these older bands because, well, they were simply better. And while I definitely agree that bands like My Chemical Romance, Paramore, Green Day, Slipknot, Deftones, and all the other older artists I'm talking about here are most certainly great bands that deserve their reputation as legends, I think there's a ton of great new rock artists as well. As just a few examples, Sueco, 100 Gex, Spirit Box, Monoskin, and Sleep Tone token to name just a few all right he's getting me i feel like okay so i was actually talking with somebody the other day about uh monoskin because I, they are super mainstream yeah. and but pitchfork shit on them and gave them like a zero or it was like a 0 0.1 review for their new album i've listened to some of their songs like not against my will on the radio but on the back side of radio against my will slightly and it has like the lyrics are like not surface level. It's not like super deep, like what we listen to, like with a lot of our music, but it's like deeper than what I ex like anticipated. And I, I'm not like a Monoskin fan. I do appreciate what they've done though. Cause it is going to help get kids more into like some type of more like pop rock, rock music and pitchfork and go suck it. You call out your boy though. Stop, bro. <laughs> Gave a shout out to your boy, dude. Yeah, my boy Swaco. It's like I'm real excited about Swaco. Fucking spirit box. Gex. Fucking Gex. And Gek, did you Gek, hear? Gek, Gek. Did you hear what he ended that sentence with? Fucking sleep token, bro. I don't know. Finn, Finn's, you know, Finn's cooking right now. And one artist in particular that stands out to me in terms of emo is Youngblood. If you're not familiar with him, he basically looks and sounds like an updated version of the 2000s Hot Topic screamo thing. <laughs> And I've been around long enough to know that this whole argument of all the new bands suck compared to the old ones is, to be blunt, bullshit. Because in 2007, they said that MCR and Paramore and Fall Out Boy were trendy crap that wouldn't stand the test of time. They said the same thing about Slipknot and Linkin Park. Basically, that's what people have said about every new generation of music that's come along as far as I've been alive. And I'm sure that will continue to happen until climate change <laughs> kills us all. But what I do think happens is that nostalgia and just the passage of time is kind of 
a filtering device where we forget about all the mediocre artists of the past and only remember the very best ones. Like for every MCR in 2007, there were literally a thousand mediocre, underwhelming, generic emo bands that we all just forgot about because honestly, they weren't good enough to stand the test of time. And that's really always been the Name them. Name them. Name, Name drop them. them. I want to know. Case in every genre. <laughs> Hawthorne Heights. Of music. Shut we forget the, the 99% of it that was <laughs> oh, crap and remember up. the 1% that was great. So that's always been the case, but it's never stopped young people from going crazy for new artists. For example, when I was a teenager in the 90s, the fact that great bands like Led Zeppelin or The Beatles existed didn't stop us from loving new bands like The Offspring, Soundgarden, No Doubt, or Oasis. So I really don't want to admit it, but when I listen to a lot of these new artists, even really good ones like Youngblood and Sueco, most of it really is just a version of something from the 90s to the 2000s, maybe just with some trap drums added to make it feel a little bit more modern. Possible that in 20 years, people will be holding up Youngblood, 100 Gex, and Monoskin up as these like legendary iconic artists the same way that we now look at Green Day. And you wearing a fucking Limp Bizkit shirt in that? Yeah. That's tight as fuck. God, I love Gex. Fucking Paramore, but I kind of doubt it. I think that things really are different now, and here's why. There's an even more recognizable one-note melody. I think the biggest difference... I'm about to get on like some fucking like we got stop playing the fucking note as though no, it's a honestly, meme, dude. Stop it's, playing the note as like it's, it's a meme, dude. It's like it's, it's overplayed. It's done. It's been a thing for a really long time before this whole thing happened. I'm done with it. So I, I, I understand the concept I think that we've just done the meme to death and we need to like do another meme. We and need I think, another meme, please. Any other meme. Here's the other one. Here's the other one we can do. I think this needs to be done. Reason by Hoobastank. Why the fuck yeah. aren't we doing that shit? That's Come a one on, note piano note. Butt rock is back, baby. Let's dun, dun, go. Dun, 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 dun. Hit him with it, dude. Hit him with gotta, it. Don't. Hey, be, could you name the song the by this note? Dun, 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 dun. No more of the fucking G note meme. Yeah, We're I'm done, done with it. We're done with the G note memes. Between now and the era in which Paramore, Fall Out Boy, and Panic at the Disco came out is what people call the death of the monoculture. And in terms of pop culture, the Not monoculture the monoculture. essentially <laughs> refers to the time. Yeah, I think he's about to cook. I think Finn's about to be cooking right now. Damn. I kind of agree with it. <laughs> Time when everybody paid attention to the same things. For example, back in the 90s, whether you liked the show or not, everybody knew who Rachel was on Friends and knew about her haircut and the fact that she and Ross were in this weird thing. Everybody knew about the big movies like Clueless and Titanic, and everybody could sing along to Hit Me Baby one more time. And of course, subcultures definitely did exist, but because the media was basically limited to TV, radio, newspapers, and magazines, everybody was more or less aware of the same thing things in pop culture. And the 2000s was maybe the peak of monoculture in music. That was the very top of MTV's dominance, especially their daily video countdown show TRL. It was when radio still mattered a lot. And before social media platforms like MySpace came along and gave artists the ability to directly connect with their fans. And if you look at the artists that a lot of young people are rediscovering now, almost all of them are from that era. In fact, as much as we like to think of emo as this sort of romantic outsider music now, the truth is that 2000s emo was almost completely a product of that monoculture system. These were all big major label bands that were on the radio, MTV, and all the magazines. This was not underground stuff. And MCR in particular was very much a product of MTV. They won TRL over 10 times with songs like Helena, The Ghost of You, and Teenagers. And their most iconic breakout moment was on MTV's Video Music Awards in 2006 with their now legendary rooftop performance of welcome to the black parade yeah they like debuted it for the first time Wait, on the really? video music awards yeah but so helena the video had come out like right before the video music awards of that year and so they weren't really like going to perform because it was just kind of like too soon and then they just figured it out and they had motherfucking puff daddy <laughs> go he's like it's one of my new favorite bands my Chemical Romance and they played That's Helena insane. and it was like, but it was like right up against it. And it like very much felt like they were like, we, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if we can just fit this band on, but they're popping off. We like might have to get them on this show. And then it was like, no, I like I in the audience had no idea they were going to be on the show. 
And then all of a sudden there they fucking were. Puff Daddy just calling them out. Like my chem was that level of like youth culture at the time. Be like, we need to have them on this show. I don't don't care if it's last minute. Yeah. So I think a big part of why we haven't seen a new generation of bands break through like MCR, Paramore or Fall Out Boy is because the machine that created those bands simply doesn't exist anymore. Now, instead of the monoculture, we have an almost infinite number of these little siloed subcultures, each with its own set of star personalities. And each of these people are a huge deal within their subculture. But unless you're a part of that subculture, it might as well not even exist. Yeah, I, I got to agree with him there. No, that's correct. It's everyone's in their own echo chamber. Yeah. And I think that uh, like like I was saying uh, about, you know, enjoying knock loose at Coachella, it's a good thing because it means that more like it, it, I think that maybe the excitement of a knock loose playing Coachella is because it's like, oh, they broke out of where they have been. Right. Mm-hmm. We believe this is underground culture. We believe this is not meant to be mainstream. And then all of a sudden the mainstream kind of accepts it. And I think that's kind of what happened with My Chem and Fall Out Boy and Panic and Paramore at that time was they broke into the mainstream. But up until that point, I mean, I'm sure Pete Wentz would say this is like this was underground music. This was like our local pop punk scenes. And of course, we wanted it to get there, but no one would have expected that it actually would have broken out from, you know, the the original audience into the mainstream in that way. Again, like we can say, like I tell people too, when I talk to them like one-on-one and they're like, oh, like who have you interviewed? I'm like, oh, I've interviewed these bands. And some of them are like, oh, but like, who are they? And I'm like, well, they're big in like this subculture that I'm in, but they're not going to be big to like the mainstream culture overall. But this is like a big get. Um, When we silo people way too much, we create too much division overall. But I think now because of the genre blending, which overall it's, it's becoming so much better and we're kind of breaking down that echo chamber. Yeah, I'll agree with you on that. But I do think like it, I, I would even put it in the, in the way of uh, like describing Mr. Beast. There are going to be plenty of people who do not have any single idea who Mr. Beast is, but he's literally one of the most famous people in the world. And I think like that siloing says that like, yeah, he is mainstream culture, but he's not like on, like he's not appearing at the Super Bowl, right? He's like not, if that's yeah, the he's most mainstream name. shit. He's yeah, not a household like, name yet. Yeah. I mean, he might be because your your kids know who he is. <laughs> if your household has a kid in it, chances are they watch Mr. Beast. Like he's he's big enough that every kid probably knows, but like there's still enough siloing off that like you're not seeing Mr. Beast in the mainstream in the same way you're seeing like Britney Spears, name is still very popular. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows who Britney Spears is still. So clearly there is like a, a household name, a mainstream thing that is in everybody's consciousness. And there are still some people that are straight up like millionaires and, and have tons of views and everybody knows who they are. And your parents are like, ah, I've never heard of this person before. And it's probably like people our age who are like, what's a Mr. Beast? Like. What's I'm sure there's people who don't know what's who who or what a Mr. Beast is. Talk about TikTok in a minute, because I think it in particular is a huge part of this. Basically, my TikTok's point fault, here yes. is that I think because of all that emo is basically frozen in the mid 2000s and probably always will be, which I think is ultimately the fate of every subculture. You see teenagers now who look and act exactly the same way as their counterparts did when I was their age back in like 1990. What made you take this anatomy class? Oh, anatomy? Uh... I just thought it looked like this death cover. Oh, my. There's also this template of the punk rocker who listens to the Ramones and the Clash. There's the alternative kid that listens to Nirvana and Green Day and dresses like it's 1993. And to be fair, this is not a new thing. For example, the classic rock kids existed when I was a teenager, too. And they basically looked and acted exactly the same way as classic rock kids do now, like Pink Floyd, the Beatles and Queen. There is still this vibe, too. This was like kids that I went to high school with who were like, Zeppelin is the only music. There is no music that isn't Zeppelin. And I was not into Zeppelin because all these kids were just bastards. (laughs) They sucked. (laughs) I was like, you're no fucking fun, dude. You're all gatekeeping and girl bossing. We think that like this is transitioning, right? Like we had this era of life. We had this era of time where this is kind of like what the classic rock was for us. So we dressed and we really liked that classic rock. And now all the kids are getting into emo and pop punk and all that. And so they're dressing like that. 
But turns out they're still doing the other shit too. Like you just know all the old shit and now you just have all of it. It's, that was just all encompassing. Well, I think the yeah. the other side of the coin too is like a lot of the stuff is sticking around and becoming like in that same vein of like how we see classic rock and everything too. So that people are fantasizing and want to try to like re- like recreate like living during that time as a teen or young adult because they weren't able to. Yeah. So I think that's gonna and like I mean people we see that with doing people all the time with like here like Zeppelin and shit like that. Like people are like, I should have been in the seventies. I should have been an eighties kid. And they will like embody their entire life and personalities off of that. And there's people now who being like, Oh my God, like what was it like to be a teenager or or like a young adult during like the Tumblr indie sleaze era? I think it is really interesting to consider that like you are not a product of that era. You are a product of what has lasted from that era in your own era. And you're creating your own separate culture out of this referencing to older culture in the current culture. So I hope that he touches a little bit on like uh, emo music now is like it's it is stuck in that time capsule of 2005. We are we are like believing that 2005 is the greatest year that has ever happened to all of us, myself included. But we also are taking that as what we believe of it and how we perceive it now and doing that now we're not doing 2005 because we we can't my point here is that i think every subculture kind of gets frozen in time at the moment at which it was perfected new artists may come along in the genre but in terms of the sound and aesthetic we really kind of anchor to the ones who perfected it and i think that's the case with emo and speaking of tiktok i do think it's key to all of this and not even really tiktok in particular but just the tiktokification of pretty much all social media with these algorithmic for you feeds tiktok makes it easier than ever to discover new music because it is the exact opposite of the monoculture. It's easier than ever to go down this rabbit hole and discover old music. With all of that being said, I do have a few questions. The main one being, is this way bigger than just emo? Meaning, are we seeing the real time death of mainstream pop culture and celebrities as we know it? Because no, no, we're not. No, because now he's going to show a picture of Drake. What we're seeing is not the death of mainstream culture. What we're seeing is uh, an amalgamation of mainstream culture that there is no like if we believed that cable or, or the news or the Super Bowl or mainstream television was the mainstream. And if you were if you wanted to be popular, you had to be on MTV or if you want to be popular, you had to be caught up on the uh, on the news in some way. Right. Like if that's where mainstream was, then we've just said we don't need that to be famous. And so by giving people access to YouTube and social media, we've now made more people who are famous and in the mainstream. I'm using famous kind of like a, a same right. word as mainstream here. But basically, yeah, you, you don't need that mainstream uh, uh, thing up there to say if you reach that now you are mainstream. You can do that on a lot of different levels. So it's not dead. It's just changed into other stuff and people can find more niche communities much like this beautiful one that we've made here on our Twitch channel. So you can you can find more niche communities that are more uh, uh, specific to what you are looking for. You don't need other people to be the curators of what you like and what you want. You can curate and like your own shit. It's more the Netflixification of it. Like I want the on Netflix-ification. demand shit. I want on demand shit, dude. I mean, it's like we have a diff- we have a variety of new vehicles that we're able to like drive down a bunch of different like highways and alleyways and wherever and just be like, I'm going to try here. I'm going to try here. And then like whatever works, works best because you're going to do whatever works better for you. We all need our communities around us. We need more positive communities in general. But I don't think that it was better when there was like a top level mainstream this is where you have to be if you want to be anything in the world we need more variety in that and we need more people that are famous on different levels so that it doesn't rely on just one kingmaker one uh place where you go to find everything that you 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 love now and so it's very nice that like some of the stuff that we love came back but it does feel like everything is coming back if limp biscuit is massive right now it's not just oh yeah like it's, it, it's it's entire subculture and that's yeah. like that sub genre that people like lump in together. I mean, it's coming in different waves, um, but it's still coming in. And I feel like it's giving 
the way that it's coming in, it's it's giving two to three years for each to have their big moment. So Butt Rock is probably going to have two to three years. We're riding like, that Butt Rock up. train, brother. Butt Rock is back, brother. Choo choo. Because if you think about it, most of the biggest stars right now are still from the monoculture era. The Rock, Drake, Taylor Swift, Selena Gomez. I'm not sure if we'll ever have stars on that level again with that kind of just super, super broad appeal where absolutely everybody knows who they are in this new TikTok era. I could be wrong if I... You could be wrong. I yeah, also you could think be. <laughs> there is an old media that is still propping up a lot of these people like The Rock, Jimmy Fallon... Jimmy Fallon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fallon. All my homies hate Jimmy Fallon. All my homies hate Jimmy Fallon. But there is still going to be an old media, an old Hollywood that is going to prop up these people. But people are going to have them. Like, I don't hate The Rock being in a movie. I'm not going to not see a movie because The Rock is in it. But I'm going to have a diverse uh, uh, media appetite for things that are both The Rock and some YouTuber that you don't fucking know. To be both. Could be both. Why not both? Could be both. Working all those Even someone like 21 Savage, who is obviously a huge mainstream rapper, I don't think he has the same level of recognition to just a random person off the street as no. Lil Jon or even Young Jock would in like 2007. I'll give him that. Yeah, that's right. But that's I also correct. think like, you're right. A random person wouldn't know who 21 Savage is, but a lot of fucking people are going to know who 21 Savage is oh, for yeah. a long time. Like, they're not going to forget 21 Savage. But it just might not be everybody. And honestly, like, I think there was this really weird sense, like every artist had to be the biggest in the world in the event that you're going to do anything right. And now a lot of people can make a career in music without having to be the largest artist. You don't have to be Little John. and You can be 21 Savage and be still making a fuck ton of money and being a, a, a longstanding artist working with Drake. It's like Frank Ocean. It's a Frank Ocean effect. It's like Frank Ocean, except he doesn't get a second set. For the most part, I think I would rather live in a world where we each get to create our own feed of the things that make us happy rather than the media forcing that onto us. But I do wonder if maybe we collectively miss that sort of shared connection to a larger culture. And maybe that's actually part of what's behind the emo revival. I don't know. So I'm not sure about all of that. But what I do know is that this will always and forever summon an emo kid. I need to do it, it's done. It's over with. Stop. He did not say anything about why it died because he didn't get into that, I guess. Yeah. So that parentheses in there. Unnecessary parentheses. Your punctuation, yeah. my friend. Inappropriate. I generally agree with why. Why he's saying his general thesis as to why emo is popular again. I think he's correct. And I think that it's like anything. Like all this stuff is popular again. So, I mean... I would even say like calling out like Drake, Taylor Swift. It's like those are big artists because they're doing the same thing that a lot of the older artists are also doing. But like there's a lot of hype around artists like Drake and uh, artists like Taylor Swift that they don't need to create. They're already giant artists. So yeah. I don't know if we're going to get another one, but I do think that like Drake and Taylor Swift are going to be artists that we know and hear about for probably ever. I don't think there's going to be a time when we go, ah, man, you know. Really missed that Taylor Swift. Yeah, no, yeah, they have such long-standing one fan culture, which is one of mm -hmm. the most pivotal things you do need. Again, it, it comes down to like what is a household name, and like how has that changed so much over like the last couple of decades? Because things are gonna be long-standing, things won't be long-standing. We're like, you know, we'll say My Chemical Romance is forever, but you know they're played on the radio. But if you talk to somebody who's you know maybe more Gen X. They may or may not know. If you talk to somebody who's a boomer, they're absolutely not going to know, most likely. Unless they're the parent of a kid. <laughs> like, my they're mom like knows. My mom fucking knows. Oh, yeah, no. My, par my parents know because yeah. I'm annoying. Because I'm a problem. This will be the second time that we have uh, done something about Finn McKenty, and I hope that he <laughs> doesn't watch this and hate on us right at the beginning, and then we get to the end, and we're like, dude, actually, like, you're fine. Actually, we give you props. We give yeah, you props. Yeah, like, watch the whole thing through. 